to the degree that you want something is the degree you're afraid of not having. Yeah. God, I wish I started when I was younger. I go, well, yeah, but you didn't. So shut the fuck up and let's <laughs> right. keep going. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody changes until they change their energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life. Because it's not till then that it's really real. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is way worse than I thought. It's like, oh, yeah, it's way, way worse than you thought. Yeah. But luckily, there's more to you than you think. Oh my God, we just got clapped that was in. A great clap. Wow. Wow. I was not expecting that. No, Thank it's you. not the first time we got the clap. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Makai, you're here. Oh, wait. I just got that. <laughs> uh, speak for yourself. Still Neo in the Matrix with these. <laughs> Look at you go. Look at you go. Really, not, Doctor? Not from lack of trying. Really, Doctor? Because I think I've eaten you some sure? cheeseburgers out of the dumpster <laughs> once or twice. You sure? You sure can test me again. Do it again. Uh, maybe run that it wasn't back. my maybe that wasn't a first catch. Run that back. Maybe maybe we gotta run that back. <laughs> Nothing maybe dormant. <laughs> Man, you're back uh, from Australia. I'm so yeah. happy to see you. Good day. And we're drinking, everybody. This is the first Aubrey Marcus podcast where I'm drinking with a friend. Yeah. Here we are. We're so you normally drink first. with strangers? Or what? <laughs> well, I've never done that either. Okay, cool. I kind so of feel like everybody's drinking. my friend. First time drinking on everybody a podcast. Everybody is your friend. I've been on mushrooms on podcasts secretly. Have you? Yeah. Oh, I can tell. But it's that. like it's like a small. I think I can tell mm-hmm. when. I've, I've I've thought that once or twice. <laughs> yeah. Like I've had a few. I've done a few things on podcasts, but never drank. So here we are. So you just came back from Australia. I did two. What's today? Tuesday. Yeah. Sunday. No. Yeah. Sunday. So day and a half. It feels like five. Fresh. <laughs> yeah. Fresh off a plane. And it was mm. for good fucking reason. Four months. Because you were fulfilling a childhood fantasy of many of yeah. us to actually be a character in Mortal Kombat. Finish him. I know. Yeah. This was the first time that I was mad that I didn't choose the path of being an actor because I would <laughs> love to be fucking Scorpion <laughs> and, then have you, and then be out there but and fucking bring, come here! All right, all right, get over here. Our, get, uh, get over our, here. Our, our, uh, Wait, our, he, doesn't, he says both, I think. No, yeah, I maybe think it's not. Most, I, think, I think originally it was get it was over get here. Get over here, yeah. yeah. So like, I think I think we're sticking with that. Yeah. Cast is fantastic, though. Cast yeah. is great, man. Like we killed it. We really killed it. Literally. There's a lot of de- there's a lot of death. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But we also, I think, a lot of us died ego deaths in this shoot. Yeah. And you know, whatever ideas we may have had walking into it, it became better. It became something that that none of us expected. Like, it's really special. That's what art should be, though, right? Like, right. you engage in it and you have right. an idea about what it is. Like, whether you, whether it was me writing my book or you doing your music or anything like that, like, you have an idea. Right. And then when it's art, it's fucking better than the idea that you had when Hopefully. you started. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, because if it's not, you're, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> There's no way to do art wrong, but that's wrong. <laughs> when you're like, every brush stroke, it just gets worse. You're like, fuck You're hell. like, now it's just a black box. <laughs> this <laughs> is yeah. terrible. Yeah. It's well, Mali Avich would promise. disagree. He's like, yeah, he's like, the black box is art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so what was that what was that like, man? I mean you got cast as Jax. Yeah. Who's like one of the most iconic characters of them all. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking cool. And you looked like when you had the full fucking airbrush, yeah. like wiped out your tattoos yeah. in the fucking blue pants. I was like, yeah, bro. oh shit. Kyle Kyle. He's the one who did my diet. Hell yeah. So I uh, thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, you'll see this. Yeah. Um What was that like? You know what? Here's, here's the thing. I haven't, I haven't told the story yet, really. Um, but I chose to leave Supergirl, right? And, uh, you know, all blessings to them. Like, we had a fantastic time. To, you had a great run? Great run. Great run. I remember back, I remember back early, you're like, man, I just got to make it past season three. Yeah. And then we good, son. Yeah. <laughs> then we're good, bro. Yeah, exactly. We're good, bro. Yeah. yeah as Ed yeah. would say. We're good, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. good, bro. Yeah, everything's good, bro. Yeah, so like I mean, like listen, I I'm so grateful to Supergirl for many many reasons, and it was just time to go. And there was this thing about it's lasted since I made the decision over a year ago to leave until like yesterday, where I'm I'm realizing I have this attachment to scarcity, to the idea and the feeling of scarcity. Uh huh. And I was like, what the fuck is that? It's not mine. I. Like I'm, I've been doing well for a long time. Like, 
I still live under my means. Like, uh-huh. you know, like I mean, I, 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 I live, I live well, but I still live under my means. Do you think that's something that drives you forward? It's like I think Conor McGregor stopped when he became the favorite instead of the underdog. Like he was not the same Conor McGregor anymore. Like he needed to be the underdog. Do you think it, it was that? Like that's what it's, would motivate you? No, it's 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 more like so. In in, in the context of like how this works out for my career is you get to a point in your career where you're, you're comfortable and you're making a, a lot of money and to, to walk away and say, no, I'm good without having a plan. Like just sort of walking off the edge of the cliff into the darkness, being comfortable with the unknown. Yep. I, for me, mine, my hesitation was attached to scarcity and that scarcity didn't even come from me. It came from my mom mm. and it came, probably came from her mom. Yeah. And then her mom and so on and so forth, all the way back to the time when my ancestors weren't allowed to have anything. So it's, I think it's, there's this generational sort of trauma that I'm deciding to stop, right? So the first part of that, I think, was deciding to leave a job that was putting, you know, Good money. seven figures in, into my pocket. Yeah. You know, that's, that's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially go, when you're stepping into the unknown. Yeah. And you're making more every year. Mm-hmm. You're, they're going to give you more every year. Yeah, that's the way shows work. And you go, thank you so much, but no thank you. I'm going to take my chances. That's something that people do. It's not just career, you right. know, to take that courage. That's relationship, true. It's like Absolutely. that's like Tarzan swinging from a vine. You don't let yeah. go of the first vine until you can hold on with a nice tight grasp to that second vine. Unless you're and trying you're... to swing out of the jungle and you just go, fuck it, let's see what happens. Fuck it, yeah, just <laughs> find the wings. And, and just... then a pterodactyl just grabs you. Out of the I don't know why Tarzan is 65 million years old now, but that's, that's, that's how I see it. <laughs> yeah, and then you're fucking Sahelu with the giant, the giant beast from from Avatar, and then mm. you get fucking picked up in that. You, thing. Of course, you know the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the Bond. What was you're, that thing? You're such, a, you're, such a, you're such a warrior nerd. Taruk Makhtar. I know. I am. I've been doing fucking warrior movie references I know, all day. I, know, I love it. All day, all, all ten yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, pretty much every day, forever. So you took that leap of faith, and the thing about faith is, it's it's always a leap. It's never a step. I think they did that in the Indiana Jones, like in that one thing where you had to walk on that invisible pathway. Yeah, and like the Last Crusade or whatever that yeah, was. Yeah. It was like it's always a leap. You can't just like touch your foot on it. Nope. Oh, I think he actually did spray some rocks on it or something like that. But in general, like a f- leap of faith is required you have to just jump and have faith that the unknown will catch you well i think it's i think it's referred to as a leap because we're afraid to just walk right yeah. so oh, we stop so. we stop to go fuck it just 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 do it just jump instead uh-huh. of, instead of going no there's no scarcity i'm just gonna walk and the ground's gonna fucking be there yeah so that's kind of where i got yeah but it's not really a leap it, we make it a leap because of our attachments of our old and ideas our fears. yeah that's so and, wise. That's and, absolutely true. And so when I when I chose to leave the show, I wasn't leaping. You just strolled off. That I was bitch. like, I know everything's gonna be fine tomorrow. And then I did two auditions, and Mortal Kombat was the second one. And I was in, I remember I was in Sweden. I was visiting my girlfriend Frida's family, and uh, I was like, Babe, I can't hang out with your family at all because I got to study. Mm-hmm. So like. If I really want something, you know, the audition was seven pages long. I spent 112 hours, like, focusing on the material. And people go like, what the fuck can you, how can you spend 112 hours on seven pages? I'm like, and what do you get from that? I'm like, shit you can't figure out in 20. <laughs> yeah. You Com- spent. It's full commitment. Full commitment. Like, to the point of where I know the, I know the, 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 the dialogue, like their song lyrics. Like it's annoying. I, I hate it by the time I shoot it. Mm-hmm. So we shot it as as I was studying because I studied so much for it. I knew I had it. Like I didn't even have to get feedback. I was like, okay, I got this. So I started working out and I did this thing where I visualized uh, one of the audition scenes every day. I visual. I put myself in, in the space. I looked at the minutia. Like uh, I just ate this. This is my costume. I'm seeing it from my own perspective. Here's another character that I am gonna have to fight and here's what it looks like and here's the smoke machine. I hear them call action. I'm, I'm talking to the director, like I, I built it. And I started to feel kind of crazy doing that, right? Just every day, like, why am I doing this? And something kind of kicked in where 
it stopped feeling like a visualization or imagination. It started feeling like a memory, right? It started mm -hmm. to feel like a future memory. And then I started, I started doing some research on that. And it appears that the brain doesn't really know the difference. Nope. Like the same centers light up in the brain when you're imagining something and when you're remembering something. As long as you feel it. Right. The feeling is the thing that translates that into that your it. body that connects it. Right. So you can hypothesize about something, like visualize something in your mind. But if you don't feel it, the body's like... I don't know what the brain's doing. It's doing yeah, some it's, shit, but, it's, I, it's but I don't believe it. It's daydreaming. Yeah, it's daydreaming. Right. Yeah, but if you if you see it and feel it, mm -hmm. then you're entering into a known future reality, and the body doesn't know the fucking difference. The body that that's what that's that's what got me. The brain does not know the it cannot differentiate between a memory or your imagination or a visualization that you're actually building. Mm -hmm. So, I was really connected to the role. I was really connected to to the project and. Every single day, seven days a week, when I, when I woke up, I would spend 15 minutes just in this scene. And I was supposed to find out if I got the job or not, like on a Friday. Didn't happen. Always, It's always that way. Monday goes by, nothing. Tuesday goes by, nothing. I'm like trying to keep myself busy, keep my mind off of it. I'm in the gym and, I, and I'm working out and I stop and I go, oh, they're about to call me and tell me I got it. Five minutes later. <laughs> my manager calls up, says something stupid like a dickhead. Because <laughs> we have that kind of relationship, right? Yeah. He's like, I, I injured my eye. And he's like, hey, we got your new eyeball. Good news. I'm like, okay, what's, what's up with the other thing? <laughs> and he told me, and I'm in the gym in Vancouver. And I, this was not the reaction I expected. I literally I took the phone and kind of kneeled and just broke down in tears. Yeah. Because that leap of faith, the idea behind having to make it a leap vanished, mm -hmm. it completely shattered. And like that's something I'd always held on to since I was a kid and I think that was just a, a product of generational trauma, it's not mine. Like I'll, I'll, I'll go book a villa in Tulum, which I know I can afford, and I go, fuck, that was so expensive. I'm like, but it's not, <laughs> like, it's mm -hmm. like it's not that expensive, really, you know what I'm saying? You've so it's been, like, you've it's, just been taught that. I've, yeah, I've been programmed to think that. So letting go of that's been a really huge issue for me. I think that one of the reasons for tears that I always find when I find something that I know has happened that's greater than my belief system has currently been mm -hmm. been an allowance of. So yeah. like even if I'm even if I'm pulling a card from a deck or I'm giving a speech and that speech turns out better than I right. was capable of right. of delivering. Right. Like you were there for that speech I gave at Burning Man, right? Like I finished the speech, it was probably the best speech it's I've ever given. Speech. And speech. and I go my reaction wasn't like, yeah, I fucking crushed it. it was I just sat down quietly and cried. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, wow, something greater than me was with me the whole time. Mm -hmm. And like that feeling that you probably had were like, oh, the something greater than me was holding my hand this whole time. Right. And even though, I, and, and then you think about all the times, not maybe consciously, but you feel all the times you've doubted the fact that source or whatever that higher, greater thing than us was holding our hand the whole time and we're like, I'm all alone, I gotta fucking figure this out on my own and then some shit like that happens, you're like, oh, actually, they, it's, I've been getting my hand held the whole way. I call, I call it the 18 year old truth. Like you know exactly what you want when you're 18. Yeah. And then the world kicks your fucking ass. And your parents tell you you're stupid. And your friends laugh at your dreams and every teacher's voice who doubted you comes back and all this other shit happens and the world has this way, that this sort of, self-limiting uh, uh, mechanism of trying not to feel so bad about themselves so they try to limit other people, right? And then we buy into it. And it really just comes down to what the fuck did you want when you first left your parents' house? Mm -hmm. Most of us pretty much had a, a, good, a good idea what that was. Yep. And then we sort of temper it as we go on. Because we don't want to get our expectations so high and get, fuck, get them smashed. Because that all of our all of these counter forces, as Robert Greene says, they're going to try and prevent us from getting smashed because they've been smashed. And right. Maybe they didn't right. have the skills or the or perseverance the, the or whatever system. the belief yeah, yeah, system, yeah, yeah. whatever it was, to actually push through right. the smashing that is inevitable mm -hmm. and make it on the other side of that honing of that sword of our soul, so we could mm -hmm. get to where we're fucking going. So they're like, "Don't even do it. Just take that accounting job." Yeah, but I'm I'm so used to the smashing now that I'm like, that's part of it. <laughs> that's that's like that's part of it. That's foreplay. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not always great, but it but it leads to what you want. 
<laughs> That's fucking fantastic. Yeah. In sex, smashing comes after the foreplay. In life, the smashing is the foreplay. The smashing is the foreplay. Yeah. Right. Right. That's, that's oh, the truth. Oh, yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Or it's just stick, more smashing. Stick, stick in there long enough. <laughs> it might, it'll work out for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to do it, man. I mean, look. Got to do it, bro. You got to be a fucking, you got to be a superhero. Yeah. Again, and, like, but on like the big silver screen on, version. On the, on the, the, yeah. Like you, 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 you and I both know, like it's, it's, we had a conversation in, in Peru. Mm-hmm. That's actually starting my book off. Hell yeah. Um, just about where, you and I both know we we have the the ability to achieve, and yeah, this is this is the beginning of something. Yeah, for me. And with what you've, and I think one of the things about what you did too, which I think is really important, is work. Knowing that you worked that hard, knowing that you put 112 hours in instead of like a just getting by 40 or like a just getting by 50. Yeah. When you know that you have not left a single rock unturned like a single door unopened there's a certain confidence and a certain like swagger that comes from that like there is nothing else i could have done so like you don't there's no self-judge or self the the criticism of yourself you're like if i'm not right for this role like it's beyond me because there's not a fucking thing else i could have done right it's it's more like yes absolutely but it's also more like as an artist like as an actor who's who's giving a performance right it's that you can't change anything or you think of anything that I haven't already thought of because I spent the most time with it the Mm. most recently. Yeah. Right. So like it's no longer yours. It's the person who spent the most time with it the most recently. It's theirs now. Yeah. That role is yours because you've put, you filled in all the blanks. So there's nothing that you can throw at me that I don't know what he would do. I, I, I don't have an answer for an immediate visceral response for and using your words. So like there's, there's, yes, there's a swagger and a confidence to that, but it's also, it goes, it goes to the point of where you're like, you lose the swagger, you lose the confidence because that's still you Mm. by hour 75. You're just him. And there's, there's no separation. This is like, okay, cool. This is, I'm just saying these words to these people because I guess I got to be here in this weird way, but I'm him. Yeah, you can see, right? Yeah, I'm him. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so it gets to the point of where like it, you have to feel crazy. Yeah, like and, and, and depends on the audition. Like seven pages is not is not a lot. So like you start to feel crazy around sixty, seventy five hours into it. Then ninety hours into it, you go, oh, I got that, I got it. Still got to put another, another twelve, fifteen into it, but I got it. I, I got this role. Do you think? Do you think that? All right. So this is specific to acting. What you were just talking about. But if we were going to apply that universally, yeah, do you think that I uh, think it works? Do you think that a fighter could do that, where he's like, "I'm the champion"? Like, let's say it's a challenger for the for the belt, where they spend so much time visualizing themselves being the champion, where they walk in and they're like, "This is what the champion I, does." I, I, Adesanya does that. Yeah, he he visualizes sure. that. He, no, he does. He visualizes everything. Uh huh. And he goes through the moves and the combinations he wants to use. He jumps up on the ring at like at like he's won and straddles the side. He does everything. He plays the whole fight out in his head. And so he, he's living in the future reality that he's already created and telling his body body that he's already done. His body and his brain are accustomed to already having done it. So now his now the reality just has to catch up to what his brain already knows. So like that's what happens when you put when 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 you basically go that deep into something and you put that much effort into it. The universe starts to help. He goes, oh, this is the dimension you want to live in. <laughs> Got it. Cool. Because I didn't know. Because sometimes you spend 20 hours on this and then you spend 25 hours partying. Yeah. So I, th- I thought you wanted to be in the party dimension. Yeah. Or, or you doubting s- yourself for even more hours. And, one, which, and which, being in that which place is of party. scarcity. Yeah. Whatever, and the escape from the whatever doubting, escape, which is partying. Yeah. Yeah. Which, whatever escape you want to use, they're interchangeable. It's not the focus, right? It's not the focus of, of, of said work your company, this audition, whatever the case is. And I think once you apply your being um, so forcefully, it, 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 there's, there's just a different level of effectiveness, right? It's like you were saying um, the concept of the, the brain not knowing the difference between an imagi- imagination and memory, right? Yeah. 
And you have to have a, a strong emotional connection attached to that. Well, the strong emotional connection attached to that is 60 hours or 75 hours of just doing something going, fuck, this is crazy. Why am I doing this? Mm. Oh, by an hour 90, you know why you're doing it. Yeah. And then three months later, two months later, you go, oh, my life has changed. <laughs> and I just felt crazy for a day and a half. The universality of that application is really kind of interesting because yeah. like you think about people who are, let's say they're afraid of speaking. Right. You know, or let's say they're afraid of here we got Whitney right here sitting off camera. Like she's afraid of singing. Like if she, but she spent, has a great voice. She has a great voice. I've heard it. So let's say let's say Make, she spent. Hey, hey, if you guys watch this podcast, go to Whitney's page and comment. Why the fuck aren't you singing like, yeah, on your podcast? Yeah, get her, get her, get her, get her, get her. Get her. But let's say she's you got spent, 365 days. Let's say you spent that much time. I'm be living in the future reality That's your where, dope you're, where you are singing and everybody is listening and everybody's fucking jamming yeah. and you're just crushing it yeah. with everything that you got. Like if you live in that reality, your brain will think that reality happened already. It doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know the difference. And then when you're out there, it won't, be, it won't be nerves anymore. It'll be like, oh, I, re I, I remember this. I, re <laughs> yeah. I remember this. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah. Let's say it's an important date that you have, right? Like that. you got an important date that you got and you just imagine yourself being funny and calm and just enjoying this and knowing like, feeling like, oh, I'm, a tr I'm your fucking man. I'm your dude or I'm your girl or I'm your like whatever. You like live in that reality and you, you pattern your brain enough in that reality. It, you're going to live out that future memory in the present when it yeah. actually happens the universality yeah. is fucking mind-blowing and it's, yeah. it's a big core tenant of joe dispenza's work it's why right. it works right. so magically he applies it a lot to healing and a lot to other manifestation but what you're talking about specifically i think we can literally look at every aspect of our life yeah like i have a business meeting tomorrow i can i can live in the reality where that goes exactly how i want can i, can I say my shortcut yeah so I have this, this, this morning ritual I do every day. I do uh, Wim Hof breath work. Then I do, um, Frida and I do uh, like a meditation, like Java meditation. Then we do this thing where we, we pump our hands above our heads for like 40 seconds, which is like, you know, increases testosterone, right? Yeah. So it makes you feel like a winner. They call that like a Kriya in Kundalini I don't know what the like fuck it's called, but I, don't, but I know what it does. Yeah. Like, so blind people, when they win a race, they do this. Yeah. Right? It makes you bigger. It makes you feel uh more like like you won something right sorry my lexicon is fucked because of this 14 hour plane ride <laughs> <clears throat> um and then we say 10 things we're grateful for and then we do three visualizations first one is something immediate like what do i want today or tomorrow or this week whatever second is something in the near future and the third one is like a lifelong like distant future mm-hmm but I'm spending every single day doing that. And the, the, here's, 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 here's why I brought it up. On the short term one, it's so fucking cool. It's so fun. Like I was doing these 45 step choreography fights, right? And I would just visualize it going perfectly. But the important thing was, how did I feel? Yes, at the that's, end, the, that's the most important. How one. did I feel at the end mm -hmm. of the fight? And I was like, I'm visualizing myself feeling really fucking good about that fight in four days and i did it every single day and the fights are perfect there there are fighters in this movie like we have joe taslam we have uh well joe taslam is fucking crazy like lewis tan joe taslam is from the raid raid and and uh and the the night comes for us he's too fast for the camera so like world-class fighters two fighters were were too fast for the camera Bruce Lee, Joe Taslam. That's it. Yep. Too fast for the camera. Like, Joe, you got to slow down. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. You're like, what did you just do to that person? <laughs> He's like, T -t 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 -t. the mic is like eight pieces. You're like, huh? I blinked. What happened? Um, so it, it, me having, me visualizing something I've never done before with, with the level of people like this, like I, ha I had to. Like I, I had to work while I was at home sleeping. Like I had to like wake up and visualize this. I had to do I had to do everything. It's crazy. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and go over fight choreography. But because I did that, because I had such a strong emotional attachment, I knew how good I could feel after it, right? And that's what I visualized. I didn't visualize the steps. I visualized what was my feeling. How was how was I in my body after? I was like, yeah, this is great. 
visualizing the car ride home after like i fucking killed that Mm -hmm. right so that was good that's the key and that's not something that's like a new teaching this is not new age i thought i created that this was (laughs) (laughs) this was in the bible when it said pray as if it has already been done Mm. i should know that i'm black black people know the bible Black people know the Bible. Pray as if it has already Black been done. Black people know the Bibles. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that was really racist of me. <laughs> because when it's already you're gonna done, get you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna get letters. <laughs> you're gonna get letters. <laughs> they don't know how to reach me. <laughs> but in the when it's already done, you have all of those emotions of it already being done. That's why gratitude is such a powerful emotion because it is. gratitude comes typically after something has already happened you're grateful for the thing as if it has and already it, happened and it 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 it's preceded by forgiveness yeah tell, tell me when gratitude is not preceded by forgiveness i've tried to figure this out wow go into that it's just movement in la in particular maybe austin maybe in new york but i can speak with that with expertise for la that it's all about being grateful we have to have gratitude for life and da, da, da. but also you kind of think like if you got to remind yourself how grateful you are maybe you're not grateful sure like the person that has gratitude tattooed on them probably needs a big probably, reminder that they're grateful yeah they needed to re- be reminded whatever word that- someone has tattooed on them probably is what they're working on just yes. an fyi everybody Absolutely. just an fyi <laughs> if you got love tattooed on you I'm, it means you're working on love I'm all not, right that's I'm, all i'm saying I'm, I'm laughing. I'll, I'll tell you why later. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't yeah I probably know why you're laughing because we have a friend who's got a word tattooed on his fucking neck and he's working on it. He's working on it. Good for him. You know? I love you, man. <laughs> I love both of you guys. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? I don't know. What are we talking about? Forgiveness. Oh. Forgiveness preceding <laughs> gratitude. Thank thank you. There's an adult in the room. Yeah. As someone who's not drinking out of here, thank God. Has anybody ever smoked weed in your podcast? Mm-mm. Can I? You have a joint? Yeah, let's yeah. light it up. Whitney, can you open Whitney, can you open my purse? No, no one's ever smoked weed on my podcast. We're always in the office I- and everybody's like, no smoking in the office. We have asthma. I'm like, really? Well, then get a fucking oxygen machine, because here comes <laughs> <Yeah>. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Fuck off. This is California. This is California. This is Oh, Lowell Smokes. No, it comes with matches. Lowell, really Lowell Smokes is the shit. I, I, I smoke nothing else. They have like CBD fucking pre-rolls. They got all kinds of like good pre-rolls. It's fantastic. So forgiveness. Forgiveness and uh, gratitude. So yeah. like, there's a, you know, it's a big movement in LA where everybody's like, oh, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. And all. Gratitude this, gratitude that. I am gratitude. I am gratitude. I eat at Cafe Gratitude, <laughs> and I get the I am grateful bowl, <laughs> and I'm grateful for everything, even this car accident I just got into, and blah, blah, blah. Shut the fuck up. So, Because really what it is, it's like, there's no way you can be grateful unless you forgive whatever happened. You forgive yourself, and you forgive the other people involved. Mm-hmm. And then you get a lesson, and you're grateful for the lesson. Yep. That's it. It's not like... Oh my God, some fucked up shit happened. I'm grateful for this. No, you're not. You're not yet. You're not grateful. Slow down. Come to forgiveness first, which is hard. It takes a lot of work. Gratitude's not work. Gratitude is, is, is acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. But what are you grateful for? Not for the thing happening, right? You're, you're grateful for the lessons that you learned, which in, then, which in turn you can then thank the universe for the thing. And then the more you do it, the more like the more it becomes second nature. I remember <clears throat> speaking of car accidents, which I am actually grateful for. Mm-hmm. But the first thing wasn't gratitude; it was just a knowing that it happened for me. I just didn't know why yet, but I wasn't grateful for it because I didn't know why yet. I gotta say, listen, I had no reason. I've been in two pretty bad car accidents. I have never seen anybody respond the way you responded. Thanks, brother. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I'm a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it'll come out like 10 years. But I'm impressed as a motherfucker. Like, I've never seen anybody go, the day it happened, now this happened for me. 
I've never seen that. So it like, was. It felt like one of those moments where I had. You're very. You should I, be very grateful. I had. had the so, I had. I had some something greater than me holding my hand. Cool. Because like there was not a moment. I mean, Whitney was there in the fucking I mean, hospital. I, I, I there did, was not a moment. I did too. When when I got into my car accidents, I knew something was holding my hand, but I didn't have the perspective you had. Yeah. And I was I was younger, but still like I don't, bro. I'm just. You know the funny thing with me, Amazing. man? The funny thing with me is like when something small happens, I'm a whiny little bitch. Mm. When something like trivial uh, and small happens, I'm I the fucking you. whiniest. I'm the, exact I'm the same whiniest way. of all bitches I'm the exact that same ever way. happened. But something <laughs> significant happens, I'm like, oh, I got this. Here I am. No, I'm Here the I am. Same way. You're going to come mangle oh, my face. I'll never feel oh, my, man. I'll never be able to feel what it feels like to bite an apple again. And my face is going to have a scar for the rest of my life. And I almost died. I know this happened for me. But then some shit, some stupid shit happens. Wait, it's trivial. Well, all these teeth are dead. They're turning black on the top. Oh, I'm going to have to get them dyed or I'll make them gold or I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I got to do something. Go gold. I know. John, our yeah. friend John Beer was telling me about yeah. mother of pearl teeth. I was thinking like, that's kind of cool. It dep- it, honestly, it depends on the angle on lighting because it might just look like you have <laughs> shit in your teeth. No, I had some black diamond fangs and people were like, you missing teeth? I was like, no, you gotta, you gotta see it when the bling hits. Bring the light over here. Bring the light. Like, Get a flash photographer. Come on, bring the light over here. <laughs> so that's the only thing, like, when there's color involved, you gotta uh-huh. be careful. Okay. Note, note to all people getting grills. Yeah. Mother of Pearl. Practical sa- Mother of Pearl sounds great. Uh huh. But it might look like you, like you always just ate seaweed. Well, either way, yeah. I'm gonna have two black teeth that I'm gonna have to do something with. We'll figure it out. But at least they're in there. I'm not like a hockey player. I'm not like fucking Duncan Keith who lost his whole grill. You know the story about Duncan Keith? Oh, man, it's a great story. But Duncan Keith sounds like somebody who lost his teeth. Yeah, so Duncan Keith is a defenseman on the Chicago Blackhawks. He's in the playoffs, and I think it was leading up to the Stanley Cup. Okay. He takes a puck to the mouth. Ooh. Loses, loses eight teeth Ooh. in the third period. Mm. Loses eight teeth. Goes into the locker room. Gets to whatever happens in the locker room. They collect a couple of the teeth or whatever. And then he comes out like within seven minutes later, misses a couple shifts. Mm-hmm. Comes out, Wimp. Blackhawks come back, win the game, and they, they go on to the Stanley Cup, end up winning the Stanley Cup. And in the interview, they ask him, they go, <clears throat> What are you going to do so next? Man. Like, Get some new teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're like, Man, that was fucking crazy. You lost eight teeth and then you were back in like eight minutes. And he goes, Tooth a minute. Yeah. The face is a long way from the heart. And I was like, mm. oh shit. <laughs> that is some gangster hockey player shit. That's some gangster shit right there. That is some fucking gangster shit. That's like some, but it's also like what Buddha would say. <laughs> you know, like the face is a long way from the heart. Yeah. And some people have some people just have that have that thing and, and also you cultivate that though because mm-hmm. like if you're that type of player that he is mm-hmm. like he's constantly just getting fucking wrecked and then just standing up again and then just going at it again i think yeah. hockey players are some of my favorite people because of that because yeah, it's just like such a players. such a like yeah. a grueling experience of physical they're kind of like ufc struggle. fighters on ice yeah yeah totally yeah but, but the ufc is like so dramatic and defeating yeah. It can cause like some forms of psychological trauma. I agree. Where it's like where someone is just holding you down and beating you. Beating the fuck out of you for only 15% of the revenue. Yeah. And then like indefinitely and you're not getting paid. And like, like it can like be a kind of be. nightmarish situation. Like be, yeah. I think hockey like is actually. You going to pass that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think hockey is like the best version of violence mixed with like. It's not going to be objective. There's exact, an objective. Yeah, yeah, there's an objective. Yeah. It's like, it's violent. I mean, I love fighting and I'm hugely involved Me too, in fighting. But the I've, objective is to dominate somebody else, which is kind of like, it gets to you as a, as, as, as a viewer sometimes. I'm like, I have to have like six fights. I'm like, hey. Well, the ones, the ones that get to me is when like a really good striker, like somebody who's like really good on their feet and they're light on their feet and they might just meet some fucking corn fed wrestler Ugh. that just holds them down and yeah. humps them and grinds their yeah. face and just elbow after fist and they can't even do their skill the that they've trained admission. their whole whole life whole yeah, yeah 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 like they've trained their whole life and they can't even do it at all <laughs> like that's tough that's man crazy. yeah no no i mean like there's a there's a couple huge maori guys i saw at the adesanya fight uh in the um 
the fighting before him. Oh, you went to that? Yeah. It was the most unbelievable shit I've that ever That was seen. the most unbelievable shit ever. That's how, first that's, of all, that's how I know it's all the shit about Adesanya. First like, of all, he did, a, he did that choreographed dance mm-hmm. before he went out there. And like in an interview I saw he did with Brendan about that, he was like... It's crazy. He's like, no one's ever done that before. No. And the reason why is it puts so much pressure on you. Because if you lose yeah. after doing a choreographed he, dance... He knew he wasn't going to lose. That's the thing. He visualized that's it. That's the fucking thing. I he, think he does ayahuasca. He I'm, or he's I'm, in or he's in that state innately. I'm certain he does because of some of the language he uses. I'm certain he does. I'm pretty certain. He's a wizard. Like we haven't seen a wizard like that. He's a wizard since maybe he's Anderson Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva kind of tapped that for a little while, and then he kind of maybe lost the speed or lost. I wasn't, the I wasn't familiar with the sport back then. He had a little bit of that, but he's like one of those rare breeds that come yeah. across. Connor had that kind of magic when he was. When he just believed in himself so much, he would knock you out with his belief. Tyson did the same thing. The Muhammad thing. Ali magic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like when Tyson was in his prime, people would go down from a fucking, just from his presence. Right. He and would like graze him. You look so, at some of the Tyson knockouts, and you're like, he didn't even really hit him. So Tyson and Frazier are the two guys I looked at for Jax. So I watched hours and hours and hours of footage on Tyson and Frazier. And like he's so Jax has a fighting style kind of like that, bouncing a lot, shoulder first. You know, it's dope. Like I, I, I have a new respect for Mike Tyson as an adult. Yeah, I was like, this mother, you couldn't even hit him. Even if you hit him, he was still coming. Nope. And it, the funny thing is, he's all gray bearded now, yeah. and he's like, still can move. I watched him move in like an Instagram clip, and he was like just showing some young fighter like how to move, and he's not even loose. And he's just moving around, and you're like, he's, yeah, wow. He just had like a coffee. And he's like, he's like doing 5-MEO all the time, 5-MEO DMT. Like, he's deep in the psychedelic world. He owes world. me $100, too. <laughs> true story. Oh, Mike, pay up, pay true, up McCod. True story. Fuck. I never bring it up when I see him, but it's a true story. He fell asleep at a strip club <laughs> while he was getting lap dances. And I paid for it. So, <laughs> I was like, you know, Mike. Because if, if, <laughs> if you're Mike Tyson, the script club is too boring for you to stay awake. <laughs> Listen, I or could, he was too high. I can, I can. I don't think he was doing anything. I think he was just drinking the time. He's just like, eh, I'm out. Yeah, it was like right around the time, when I, right after he got. I think it was right after Hangover, right before. Mm-hmm. Right, it was when he had the face tattoo, for sure. You know, one thing. Did you see that one man show that he did? Incredible. He fucking knocked it out of the park. I love him. He's incredible. Yeah. I and still, just how I, he set how he set all those rape allegations straight, like from his side of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously it, it is his side and like, you know, there's obviously different things. But the way he talked about it and how vulnerably he talked about it, it seemed like one of the most authentic ways to handle a past that had blessings and, and people calling him out and challenges and all that. Like he handled that well. Listen, I, I always take victims seriously, right? If a victim says something sure. happened, I always take them seriously. But I also don't overlook the fact that America has taken every opportunity to tear down minority men who feel feel like they, they're uncomfortable with their position. So like, both things can be true, half of that can be true, who knows? But... Um, Irregardless, I, I, how he handled it was how, was how anybody could Mike. handle it. I, I, I think I, he handled it the best way he could. Yeah, you know, minus an ear or so. Yeah, that <laughs> that one for yeah, sure he's, happened. He's a savage. I mean, that, yeah, that yeah. one that one was on video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, I, honestly, I'm surprised that's all he did. <laughs> really, like, I mean, like after everything he's been through in his life, like just biting half a ear off. All right, all right, it's not that bad. Really, I mean, think about it. Like, think about all the injustice. If everything. That he says is true. All the injustices that have happened to him, and, he, and all he did was bite another fighter's ear off. That's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. Like a Mike, a legend. Mm-hmm. So, how do we get talking about this? I don't know. We're high and we're drinking and shit. I don't know. We're gonna go on tangents. That's why we're doing a drunk podcast. This is great. We, <laughs> this is the first <clears throat> ever Aubrey Marcus and drunk and drunk high, high podcast. podcast. Of course, it's with. Me, the pirate. <laughs> Jesus. Duh, duh. You, the only thing missing, you know what's missing is having Tate Fletcher right oh, here, man. right here between us. Oh man. You know? Oh, oh man. man. Oh man. <laughs> that Tate would be Fletcher. really good. That guy. 
we had it. We had the most epic experience out, and we won't describe in details because it's a story all on its own. It could be a special. Yeah, it's, like trying, it's like trying to tell somebody a dream. It's like trying to tell yeah. somebody the Lord of the Rings in passing. You know, it's like <laughs> you're right. You can't really do it justice. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was Tate and our boy John Beer and Aaron Alexander Kyle. and Kyle and uh, and a Cal. bunch of other men. And yeah, it was a. It was a special ceremonial night that I think will will never be forgiven. That was probably closer to breaking space time than Kyle's thirty gram mushroom trip. Actually, yeah, honestly, you know what it was? It was like, for me, it was like the most fun psychedelic or mo- almost like an ayahuasca trip. But the, the 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 most fun parts of an ayahuasca trip without the actual real purging or commitment. Yeah, and. Staying in like this interdimensional space for hours on end where Tate was this somehow this ringmaster of he was of uh decadent childlike <laughs> like uh, observations of life right he was like he was. what he was like confucius was... if confucius <laughs> was fucking eloquent and yeah. just went on comedic rampages yes it's like if every yes. fortune cookie was taken from one two-hour comedy set <laughs> and that's how we got all of confucius's wisdom was right. from that right like that's what tate was absolutely for like four hours and then he had his he had his side his counterpart which was aaron who was laughing more hysterically than any uh, human the- being to the point of where it sounded like a ra- I thought it was a radar. I was like, what radar? Did somebody set off an alarm? It was Aaron Alexander's la- constant laughter. Constant for over unending three hours. laughter. Yeah. This, see, the thing is, both me and you, we've done a lot of psychedelic journeys where we've had the most profound spiritual experiences, right. contact with yeah. the other. Whatever the other is to you, yeah. source, God, spirit, and many of the intermediary others of yeah. like, earth itself gaia talking to the sky father yeah. yeah of course all of these different things all of the ways that the unicity breaks out into polarity we've done all that but we, then we've also had nights like, like yeah. that one yeah in sedona and like <laughs> both are valuable both are extremely valuable in their own way and yeah. we've also had you know we've been at burning man together and just yep. been listening to good music and dancing yep. and that's like that's kind of the thing because i think obviously we want to highlight the potential of these medicines like psilocybin which is you can profoundly change your life you can lessen the anxiety you have before you die you can create a top you know two spiritual experience of your life absolutely you know and this has been proven in johns hopkins research and all this other research but i think you you, you can change your thoughts you can completely change your thoughts create new patterns you can also grind to diplo right in a in a deserted salt lake Absolutely. You can also just <laughs> laugh with 10 of your friends for five minutes so hard that the laughter itself becomes the purge where right. you're cleansing right. all the things right. that you've taken seriously your entire life. Entire life. Wow, yeah. In a night. And Never like, thought about that. That's exactly We don't what happened. talk about all of those stories because some of those stories are like, well, it is fun. We're like, yes, it can be fun, but it can also be like deep in the middle. It's all the thing. I mean, no matter how fun that night was, it was still work. It was still a ceremony. Like it was still, course, it was for thrilled. sure. It was still I was. Work. I had a puke bucket outside, yeah. and I just just alternating between purging and la- my yeah. own innate sadness mm-hmm. and the challenges in my heart, and laughing so <laughs> hard that I thought I would actually split in two. Yeah, I mean that's like yeah. that's something that you. It's an experience that is just kind of available, and we won't be talking about this through this whole like big legalization push because we're going to get very narrow focus and as we should right but but also like you know it's really good to laugh a lot like we had another brother there and we won't mention his name but what kind of, hey, yeah jump in i had just injured my eye That's right you know on, on on a show that i was working on and i didn't have full vision and as i'm talking about it, i can i can feel where it still hurts it's crazy like it's it's a deep wound <clears throat> you know energetically physically metaphysically however you, however you want to put it like it's it's it's, it's you're like, like the you like the black male sansa stark you can <laughs> still feel what had happened to you in the dark times 
Listen, it's it's <laughs> that's a deep Game of Thrones reference. Yeah, such a warrior. Giles got such it. A warrior Giles, such no, a warrior nerd. No, Giles didn't such even get it. Such a warrior nerd. <laughs> such a warrior nerd. It's amazing. Some people out there got it. Yeah. Whoever you are out there who got it, fucking like, props to you. Like whenever you see Aubrey, imagine him like in Lord of the Rings cosplay in his head <laughs> yes. all the time. It's true, actually. He's like it's he's true. Actually, I know it looks like he's wearing jeans and a t-shirt, but he's actually wearing like a leather woven <laughs> like beaver pelt. <laughs> With a big gold sash, trust with, me. With Elvis chainmail underneath. Yes, and of course, and, and an iPhone. It's and weird. <laughs> um, well, the feeling your eye. Oh, feeling yeah. Feeling your eye going. So, in so when we had this experience in Sedona, I, I had a pretty bad eye injury. Like I, I didn't have full vision. And the laughter was the medicine. Yeah. Like it's so. I think it's good to talk about these kind of things. Where like I've never laughed that hard, <laughs> that long. At that many things, yeah, in my life, likewise, never. That was it. That's at the I, bar. I, I didn't even imagine somebody could. <laughs> no, it's it's a like that's that's a real statement. I didn't know it was possible to laugh that hard for that long about so many different subjects. That was medicinal. That was that was a highlight of my life. Yeah, I agree. So like, that helped heal my eye. Yeah, and your yeah. eye did get better. After it got that, it got which was twenty percent better the next day. I was like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" Yeah, like the, when I woke up, the eye was maybe thirty percent better. So, Doctor Andrew and Weil, one night, Doctor Andrew Weil was on my podcast, and he was talking about laughter yoga and the studies that show that laughter is actually medicinal to the hormone it, levels, yes. and the stress levels. But taking laughter to that extreme then becomes something really interesting. And I also... It's an overdose. Just recently... Yeah, it was really... It was like yeah. the maximum yeah. effective dose. I've never... And, and I was recently talking to a tantric sex master and an instructor, and her name's Layla Martin, and she was talking about how the ecstasy of sexual pleasure can actually bring you to union with source yeah. because it's such a strong thing at, at that level if you can cultivate it and combine breath and mindfulness that's why and i like everything. sex i'm highly spiritual <laughs> yeah. it's true I mean, well it is the moment of orgasm is the closest to that moment on five m five meo it's like that you can experience it's like kissing god in the neck it you know is I mean? yeah. it is and then like five meo is like a long slow french kiss that's right. But it's the same thing. <laughs> it's like close. You French kiss guy. You got to step my game up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to open your, open your tongue, open your I, mouth up. I'll take my shot. But okay. so, <laughs> so like, all right, so let's say sexual ecstasy reaches a point where everything is screaming so loud that it's like one note. Because God is like one note that we differentiate and articulate into the many right, different beings right, and things right. that we are. So Uni Barca. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, but laughter in its own way is like such an at that level is such an ecstasy that yeah. at that point it's like the one note also it's like everything collapses into unicity because all there is is the absolute hilarity it was a universe. laughter orgy it, it really was that's dude. what it was like honestly if you wanted to if people go what, what was that it was a laughter medicine orgy mm -hmm. like it it was i hear it's similar to an orgy <laughs> That's what I hear. <laughs> you know, the thing, like, if I went to an orgy, though, if I went to an orgy, right. it wouldn't be that good because I would be like, I would be like kind of a little self-conscious about yeah, like yeah, other yeah. people Absolutely. looking at my performance and like, did the girl I orgied with, did she have a great experience? But, I'd be thinking about that shit. You know what I wasn't thinking about when I was out there in Sedona? Nothing. I was not thinking about anything. I didn't give a fuck what you guys thought of me or I thought of you. Yeah, but it you, might, hilarious. you might be the girl in the orgy with the, with the fucked up makeup in the corner. Just, <laughs> like, where do yeah, you go? Yeah, that's, that's, that's who you should be in an orgy. <laughs> that's not who I would be, but if I could be, that because, girl. Because John Beer brought it up. He goes, do you think he feels pressure? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it because it was kind of a performance. Aaron's laugh was kind of a performance in yeah. a way, right? Like, yep. it was almost like, does he know that he's making us happy? <laughs> does he feel pressure to continue? Like, <laughs> so these like the, like I think those those social dynamics still made them way their way into the ceremony. That's true. It's kind of interesting. But so the, the moral of the story <laughs> is you completely get out of your way yeah. and surrender to something that is so strong then then it actually becomes a spiritual practice it becomes your sadhana in a way like you, you can have a laughter sadhana and so many people yeah. have so many different ways to do it. oh i gotta fast for this long i mean i'm going into the darkness i'm going i'm doing a darkness retreat how in long? january seven days in the pitch dark how do you how do you accomplish that 
So if someone serves you, like you food through a chute. No, so you got to go to a professional center. There's only like 40 in the world. Okay. And they, you go into complete pitch dark, and they feed you food through a chute, and it's completely silent. And you memorize where the toilet is like you're a blind person, and you memorize where everything in the room is as best you can. You probably bump into shit a lot. That's what I'm imagining. And it's just pitch dark for seven seven days. The only thing that helps you tell time is they deliver the food roughly the same time, two meals a day. So you get delivered the food roughly the same time. So you'd be like, oh, shit, it's a new day. But either way, it doesn't matter. And then apparently on day five, you start producing endogenous DMT to the point where you can't, you start to like, you can't ever escape it. Because usually in a normal vision, wait, you wait. can open your eyes or look at the light, like you could turn on the right. lights. So there's no, there's no differentiation. Between, no differentiation. Between like with the third eyes projecting and what you're seeing. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm doing that in Frankfurt, Germany, because that was the place that was available. But nonetheless, so that's my sadhana. But there could be like a Wait, laughter like, sauna. But, but what are you what are you gonna accomplish with that? Like, why do you want to do it? I don't know. I'm called to it. Like, why? What was the first? What was the first reason you did ayahuasca? Was it like something you heard? Because part of it is what I heard. Part I've heard two things that I liked. Yeah. I heard that you produce more melatonin, and I heard that you produce your own DMT. And both of those things were like, that's cool. It's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, I so get that's that, cool. Yeah. And I'm sure with ayahuasca, you hear, like, I heard a couple cool things, but it was more than that. It was like, I was called to it. And I'm called to this. I, I mean, I, I, I was, I mean, I, I, I think I told myself that I was interested in the fact that it, it's a parasite medication because I had a parasite. Mm. I had the parasite. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I stepped into the realm of it. But like, I also knew it was going to change how I thought. Yeah. And I was ready for that. That's not much different because I know, you know, I'm okay. still struggling with my sleep medication. Can't, can't argue with that. Oh, so right, so like that's yeah, curing, that. that's helping me cure some very pragmatic medical. Mm -hmm. It's not really particularly medical, but like some that. particular thing that I have that I'm kind of dependent on mm -hmm. still, uh, mm -hmm. although as much many times I've tried. So there is some of that. There's like a what? pragmatic benefit. Then there's the why can't you sleep? Okay, why can't I sleep? Yeah, why can't you yeah, sleep? Yeah, because I have you a... You have to sleep. I, ha I know, and I try. <laughs> so thanks, fucking coach. Yeah, but like... Yeah, thanks, fucking old school coach. Maybe like, it's because... Punch him in the face, bro. Like, yeah, I fucking get it, <laughs> You can man. do it. <laughs> you can sleep. <laughs> Next time you can't sleep, you call me, I yell at you. You can do it. You can sleep. Go the fuck sleep. <laughs> I know what accent that is, but it was good. That's I old school that coach. Worked, that's yeah. like a Cuban boxing coach, is what I was what I was envisioning. Uh, that's exactly what I meant to do. Wow, <laughs> what the fuck, I'm so good. So why can't the reason I can't sleep is I have a I have like a a small smoldering coal of constant anxiety in my chest. That so says, do I. Yeah. yeah, it's there. Oh, and yeah. so what that is, it's constantly fueled my by my idea that I have to do stuff and then I'm here to do stuff right. and that I could potentially fail to do that stuff. And if I fail to do that stuff, I won't forgive myself. But you've already proven time and time and time and time I again know. that that's, that's bullshit. That's the thing. That's why I'm trying to get rid of that fucking thing because it is like, maybe it's not a physical parasite like you had. You had actual parasites yeah. like monsters inside me type of shit. Yeah. But, but this is a monster. ever. This is a <laughs> Yeah, really. This is like a, a psychological really monsters mean. inside me Thank you. situation where it's this thing that says, despite the fact that you've continued to do that and you can continue to deepen your practice, you might fail, you might fuck it up, I, you know, you might you might ruin everything and then you won't forgive yourself. So it's I don't have that trust that if I do my best, that's enough. And no matter what happens, I forgive myself. I don't trust in my own forgiveness. Do you really believe that you're going to fuck all of this up? No. Well, maybe some part of me does. Right? Like, like, but that, but that's the subconscious part. But, but what's that? What is that? That's an attachment to what? Okay. You so, don't really believe that. Because so it's an attachment yeah, 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 to yeah, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. What is it attached yeah, yeah, yeah. to? It's attached to the thing that keeps me in the known reality, which is addicted to feeling like, like you said you were addicted to scarcity to a certain extent it's addicted to feeling like i'm not enough scarcity it's a it's a scarcity yeah bro i'm somewhat addicted still to feeling like i'm not enough and i'm not going to be good enough here's the thing here's what i started saying to myself because i had the same thing i couldn't sleep for the same reasons i'm like well how am i going to do this like i'm sleeping seven hours a day <laughs> Or I'm da -da -da. And, I, and I said, well, I spent two hours on Netflix. Like, I would do all this shit to myself, right? But I, what I started saying to myself lately is, 
why would such an abundant soul be, be so concerned with the concept of scarcity? Or even believe it. Why would an abundant soul be interested in the concept of, of scarcity? Yeah. Scarcity does exist. On certain dimensions. But it's a projection from wh- what space you're in. Mm-hmm. It only lives on a few octaves in the whole note of the divine, you know, orchestral piano that you could call unicity, source, God, whatever. It's a couple octaves where scarcity exists. Right. Maybe only one, depending on how you want to categorize this thing and how many octaves there are. There's infinite octaves, actually. We just can't hear them. But regardless, there's a, there's a narrow band in which scarcity exists. And that's in this physical plane that we're in where sometimes there is scarcity. Sometimes people are fucking hungry. Sometimes people are poor. Sometimes people have diseases or injuries and something like that that they actually have to overcome. Now, they can raise their octave and their dimensional reality to a point where they identify as the soul, the unborn and the undying, and then they can escape the scarcity of where they are. It's what Viktor Frankl talks about when he says the last of the human freedoms is our ability to choose our attitude to any given situation and he was in auschwitz right Hmm. so like that's raising it one octave doing the classic einstein move where you're solving the problem at a different level from which it is created but if we're still in this fucking level trying to deal with scarcity by adding more money to it or adding more fame to it we're fucked i absolutely agree (laughs) but we're also fucked if if we if we have an attachment to it you know what I mean? Like, there's there's a happy medium. There's a happy medium. An attachment to anything is attaching you to an octave where there is scarcity, <clears throat> right? Because yeah, yeah. if you if you're in abundance, which is just a few octaves above, where you have an abundant soul connected to an abundant source of mm-hmm. all everything, and you know how abundant all that is. Yep, like we you felt know that. It. We felt it. And, you, and I, I know I've, you know I've that. somatically felt it. I felt it in an incontrovert for me. So where does your attachment to scarcity come from? Because you've disproven my, it. My identification with this octave where scarcity does exist, which is the which is the place where Aubrey is Aubrey. Aubrey isn't the temporary incarnation of the unborn and dying essence. Aubrey is actually Aubrey, and Aubrey exists as Aubrey. Right. Right? So it's an, it's, it's an addiction to the identification with identity itself and, like, the ordinary world and the conditionality of our... I try to get out of, out of the ordinary world as much as possible in my head. I, it makes fucking sense, because in this world, you, it's impossible not to be attached. <sighs> yeah. You know what, though? It's like... I just, it goes back to what you were saying earlier. I just keep reminding myself very quickly that everything that's happening is happening for me. Mm-hmm. And then that sort of takes me out of that, that resonance, that frequency. Right? So like, it helps me understand, I got to see this from multiple angles right now. Right? And I've, I've, I've had some heavy shit happen in the last like six months. It's been crazy. But great lessons. Mm. So I think there's like two reasons that we cry. Like for me, I've identified two reasons I cry. One is I cry because I remember. Because you cry. Yeah. <laughs> so I cry so because meta. I cry. So meta. I cry because <laughs> I cry. So literally beautiful. My tears make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One is crying because I, I remember something I forgot. So like yeah. when like that yeah. moment that moment where you broke down and cried, the moment where I do, it's like, oh, I remember that I'm connected to a power that's higher than me and it, yeah. makes, it makes me cry. And then obviously there's the other type of tears, which is in a deep lie. Like I think you either cry in a deep lie, like in a heartbreak. Like, what do you mean? Oh. Like, like so let's say heartbreak or some other situation. You feel deceived. You're deceiving yourself. Yeah. You're deceiving yourself by saying like, oh, such and such, you know, thing died, they're no longer going to be with me, or so-and-so right. broke up with me, <clears throat> and that really means, you know, and it's... it's it just not, means what it means. It, it just, means what it means, yeah. and it's, it's great to cry. I think it's important to cry, and everybody should feel the comfort of that. But for me, it's like, 
It's either in remembering, and maybe you're crying in a, in a heartbreak situation because you're remembering how many times you weren't present when you went to go kiss that person, when you went to go hug that person, when you went to love them. It might be some yeah. combination. It's either like remembering or lying is where is where like I find but the tears are like washing the lenses does, clean. Does the brain know the difference? <laughs> <laughs> it does because the heart feels different. True. If, right. you, if you know you're lying. If you know. But you're... our memories sometimes get filled in with imagination. For sure. Mistake. So like. For sure. It's, it's weird. We live in this very strange reality. It's a very strange yeah. reality. And, and there's like, no a, operating manual. It's a simulation. I love it. So we're just so, fucking figuring that shit out. All the time. But but it's it's fun finding, finding cheat codes. Yep. You know? We need them. <laughs> yeah. We need absolutely. them. This shit is hard. It would be like, I mean, there was like cheat codes on that classic video game Contra, like up, up, up down, up, down, 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 right, right. Yeah, select start. You yeah. fucking, you got God mode, right? Yep. <clears throat> if Contra codes. was so hard that you just died immediately, then like you would need the cheat code. But life is like almost that hard where it's pushing the boundaries. <laughs> it's where you, almost as hard as Contra. <laughs> it's like, it would be like if Contra was on like super hard mode, like when you yeah, play chess yeah, yeah. and like a simulated chess and you're absolutely. a pretty good chess player and you put That's it on hard. Kasparov mode and you're like, fuck you chess. Like this yeah. isn't fun at all. Yeah. But then you would need cheat codes. Absolutely. And I think life is hard enough where we need cheat codes. Absolutely. Psychedelics, cheat codes. That's why they're here. Yeah. That's why they're That's here. That's why they're here. That's literally what they are. They're like, listen. This, this is the video game. That's the cheat code. This is the video Take game. That, you and get superpowers for a second. And it's hard enough that yeah. you're going to need these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why successful people are willing to talk about it. Yeah. Like it's. More and more. Yeah. People go, oh, it's drugs. I'm like, it's not drugs. That means you haven't done it, mm -hmm. which is cool, but it's, not, it's no more of a drug than caffeine. And even the intent with how you use it can change it from a drug to not. <laughs> I've certainly taken I've certainly taken MDMA as a drug. I've I, also I took it three minutes ago on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I wish actually. <laughs> I'd be, yeah, we'd have a fun night ahead yeah, of us. Yeah. I would just be. You, I'd be like this. <laughs> Whitney, can this you table, massage my hand? This hands? table's really soft. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, can we just hold hands while we do this? I feel really connected. Is that a dog? Who is that? <laughs> but you can take you can take MDMA as a drug. You absolutely can. I and heard. you can take it as the deepest medicine, <laughs> the deepest medicine you've ever had. Antidepressant. And more than that, PTSD. Like connecting you heart to heart, soul to soul with another person or the world at large. The first time I did MDMA, I was in Australia, actually in Brisbane. Did you get it from Australia? I got it from really? Australia. Yeah. We're talking 2004. I wouldn't trust anything out there. Well, you Other know, I was like, in love with this hairdresser of mine. And was she Australian? She was Australian. Okay, she so was fucking, she maybe knew where to get some. She knew where to okay, get some. Right, she was cool. an Aussie and right. she was super good looking. So she probably had like the good the good hookup yeah, yeah, yeah but she gave it to me for my first time and i remember walking around in brisbane just looking at people going oh wow these people are great people are awesome yeah like and i would watch people kiss and they'd be in love and like oh wow that sounds really sleazy by the way <laughs> <laughs> i would watch people kiss and go oh wow <laughs> yep and everybody even the people trying too hard People in their yeah. suits yeah. at a bar on at fucking two a.m. Like yeah. you had time to change, man. Yeah, I know. Come on, yeah. mate. Yeah, like on, you man. could fucking get out of your fucking like, job and get yeah, into some regular guess, you're, shit. You're a banker, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. But I even love them. Yeah. And like that was that was something I wasn't doing it for that purpose. I was yeah. doing it because like my girl wanted me to do it with her, and we had a great time too. But that was that moment where it was like. It just changed my paradigm. I saw yeah. people differently. I forget. I forget all the time. I forget the first time I tried that. I remember the last time I tried it. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh. uh, there's, and I, that's the thing, man. We need we need these cheat codes. I think most of us do. Yeah, and unless I think so. there's a few rare versions of us who have such a discipline that they'll meditate every day for right. this amount of time. They have such a strong I, I yogic I practice. Do, they have such a strong, so many other things that they don't, I'm not saying everybody needs to do it or anybody should do it, but for a lot of us, we need fucking cheat codes because we, yeah, get, like we it, get fucking it, sidetracked. It's like this. If you play the video game, 
your PS4, like like, like Grand Theft Auto, and you use cheat codes, you would like psychedelics, basically. It's it's probably the same percentage of people. Like, no, I'm going to win this game fair and square, damn it. Hold on. I know it's going to take me eight months. <laughs> Fuck it. I know it's going to take me eight months, but I'm going to do it. And there's people like that. Yeah. And that's, that's great. But a lot of us like cheat codes. Yeah. And the cheat code you can figure this shit out could on a, be like on a Googling, in India. hey, sure. what do I do in level four when I can't figure out how to return the stolen car? And you just fucking Google it. And then you figure it out. Like psychedelics can be like yeah. just Googling some shit. Hey, why am I so jealous right now? I don't yeah. know. I'll Google it on mushrooms. Absolutely. And fucking figure that shit out. Absolutely. We should, we should coin a term for that. <laughs> Would that be like... Sugal. Seigel. 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 I seigled it. I seigled it. That sounds like that sounds like a weird. Sex. All right. Well, we got time. To like work a weird on sex it. move. Seigel. <laughs> I seigled it. Mm. Mm. What would that entail? Mm. Whoa. Whoa. Somebody. Somebody's on, on a bicycle. Side saddle. Side saddle? Ooh, Ooh. I seigled it like like one leg over the other leg, like on a countertop somewhere. Okay, okay. Dressed like Mussolini. Okay, well, we'll, we'll repeat. Yeah. Dressed like Mussolini uh, from What does Mussolini up? dress like? Like, you know, like buttoned up, like Hugo <laughs> Boss. <kinda. Yeah>. Hugo <laughs> Boss. I like Tom Ford, I feel like. Tom Ford? Yeah, I think, yeah. I don't even know what Tom Ford dresses like. Tom I just, Ford does not dress some, like. He wears like a white tee or something. Yeah, but he? he wears like a white shirt, but open to his belly button. Ooh. It's so funny, but it's great. Like, he's got the swag to do it. Mm. I think that's what I'm gonna be. Listen, we're getting like off. We're getting off. Guy. Guy. Listen, I know when I know when we're on a yes. tangent, and the tangent Absolutely. is talking about what he looks like. Where we need to be is what side saddling is to you, Whitney. Please tell us what side saddling. Well, I was just okay. Um, hmm. Side saddling, I feel like maybe would be like if you have one leg on the bed. Okay, so she said so far, side saddling is like when you got one leg on the bed. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So like Okay. As okay. Beds, the as beds, beds between go. your legs. Yeah, between my legs. And you got so, one, and leg one leg on the bed. off the bed. One leg off the bed. One, one leg's leg on the bed. bed. Like this, and I don't know what the other person is doing, but. Then the other oh, person. The that other could person be side is, saddling. Side saddling the mattress. And, and that is so much more exciting than just putting one leg over the other and having both legs on the bed. Yeah, it'll rub your clit at the same time. Thank it, you. you better make sure it's your mattress. She, she's. <laughs> Because, I don't know. Well, I you know what? Like, I'm in an Airbnb. I'm for sure side saddling side saddling the mattress tonight. Just check for bed bugs first. That's all I'm saying. Well, this is your this is your this is your this is your, this is your boy fucking this is your boy's house. We're good. <laughs> we <laughs> we made it. I'm just saying like, on random beds. Just check for bed bugs. Says you're put, the guy. If who, you're gonna put your clit on the mattress, just check. Oh, wait, just, you put your whole body on the mattress. Says, and check for bed bugs. Most of us do not. You listen, Whitney. You're listening to a guy who hasn't even gotten chlamydia. It's true. Ever in his life. Ever. How is that even possible? How is that, it's, it's, it's incredible. It is. It's incredible. No, that's a miracle. Like the Hebrews worship, <laughs> the Hebrews worship a tradition of like one day of lamp oil that lasted for fucking 14 days. And that's why there's a menorah in a large part of the world. Whatever you've, whatever you have done, people should like, they should butter the family lingam with the magical protection of your cock, which is like the universal <laughs> God condom yeah. that has prevented you from getting chlamydia at any point in your life. I've only had sex with four, with four women. I mean, at the same time on a tuesday <laughs> 2.86 million infections occur annually annually but not for this guy not for this guy neo you neo you're like you're like you're like count him on a crystal when he was jabbing through the raindrops you just got the this, fucking this, skill i danced through the raindrops here's the thing i can almost like sense if somebody has something <laughs> i swear to god i believe you i'm like i just look at the chest says like, that's called smell I look at the chest and like your hesitation bothers me. <laughs> oh man. The chest? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where the heart is. That's yeah. where the that's where the knowing is. That's where the deception lies. It's in the heart, yeah. Whitney. That, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I get it. Yeah. I but it's, I know see, I know it sounds really weird. Is, but I kind of read I read people's I'm energy. In that I'm situation, like, I have no <laughs> It's not always the hottest girl. It's not always sometimes like you miss out on really hot girls. You're like but how do you have intuition you have the clap. when all of your blood and intensity of focus is entirely in the head of your dick? It's not. Oh. I've learned. 
Oh. Learned. I regenerate that shit. Yoda. Yeah. Yoda. He's got his blood. I go, hey, I go, hey Dick. He goes, yeah, what's up? I go, uh, um, <laughs> let's work together on this one. He's like, okay, cool. <laughs> so you're not, you're not in your 20s anymore? No, I'm not in my 20s anymore. We got to share this responsibility. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> that's, that's, how that, that's how that goes. <laughs> That's good yeah. advice. Yeah, that's. I hey, actually Dick. wrote back. Yeah. What does your dick sound like? <laughs> my dick's like my dick's like. Let's fucking go, YOLO, bitches. <laughs> that's what it says. And then Aubrey goes, hey, "Calm down, calm like down. Re- relax, 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 relax. Let's meditate. I'm a dick. How can I meditate? <laughs> only one way. To I'm make- here for one thing and one thing only. <laughs> oh man. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of my dick. It's not. It's not as fucking smart. It just. Got, it's kind of like fucking savage. You got like a smart that. dick, bro. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, you got a smart dick. I'm sure it's smart. I mean, I just try to put it not in situations where it's going to be its normal self. Look, everybody has put their dicks in dumb situations. <laughs> You're not a man. <laughs> And so you put your dick in a situation where you go, am I really doing this? I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'm drunk, so I'll tell you a true story. <laughs> I knew I needed to slow down. Like, cause, look, I, I, I don't think promiscuity is a bad thing. I think it's a bad, I think anything's a bad thing that you use to cover up other things. Sure. Not if what you, you're doing, it's why you're doing it. Yeah. If you, if you use promiscuity because you like it, it's fine. But I found myself in New York in my 20s, downstairs in a, in a private bathroom with some girl with her face to the mirror <laughs> five minutes after I met her. And I, I looked up and I saw myself. I didn't recognize myself. Like I didn't recognize my face. And I freaked out. And I go, I can't do this. <laughs> She's like, huh? I go, I can't do this. She's like, what? Why? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. You really are a superhero, Makad. Like we've, just, just, we've just found it out. Like, the only person who can stop mid coitus in a private bathroom at 20 years old. We found. Was it 20? It was like 29. <laughs> Maybe 30. Six months ago, okay. Yeah. No, no. Not that I wouldn't do that, but I, I would, I would, do, I would be sure about what I was doing. Yeah, you just have a little Thank bit. Thank you. you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more awareness yeah, yeah, around yeah, yeah. It. i wrote a blog at like a bit ago maybe 10 years ago because i saw i was partying hard 10 years ago we met 10 years ago so like during the ex- i wrote 11, this blog 11. 11 so the blog that i wrote 11. at the time that we met so we met at this crazy ass christmas party and what do you mean we met at a crazy it was your crazy ass christmas was, party <laughs> Fuck it. don't try was, to don't try to just own that we met at some crazy parties. Crazy Motherfucker, ass the parties Christmas in party. your house. <laughs> yeah, and it was epic. And I was dressed up as the. <laughs> it was epic. I was dressed up as Grinch. Caitlin was dressed up as the dog that Grinch like leads around to lead the sled. It was the perfect blend between like slutty Halloween and Christmas cheer. And everybody was laying. Yeah, yeah. super. It was like the decorations. This is the most for the, interesting vibe. I've the ever invite. Seen. The invite gift. Oh man, this is embarrassing. The invite gift, not kind of, but the invite gift was, it dildo was Christmas tree. No, the invite gift was everybody had to bring their panties and put them on the Christmas tree. That was the that invite. Makes sense. That, was, that, no, that makes sense. That was the invite. No, that, that makes sense about like where you were at. 11 years for ago. sure that Me was too, where I, that, that. that was where i was sure. at i was like okay we got a christmas tree we got all the alcohol and whatever else it's very but, ser- serial killer but like you know. <laughs> but nonetheless just throw your panties on the christmas tree and let's have a great time absolutely i get that and then of course you showed up for that party you were like "Ooh, panties on a christmas i tree. smelled panties <laughs> on a tree i was like home <laughs> is this the panty tree forest i've heard so much about <laughs> Tree forest. So in panty tree forest. So you roll. You fucking roll in. You roll in. The knights of panty tree. Sorry, <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. You roll in, and that was like that was right after the peak of your True Blood fame. Right at that point, and I was like a big fan of that show. That was like season three. You were yeah, you're on, very kind. It? No, see, I was on season end of season one and end all of two. Two. Two was the main. Two is the main two, one. Two is a good season. So. That year, I mean, that was a fu- eggs fucking dope character. Like, cool you got character. to be you, you got to play the guitar, you got yeah. to like 
that I mean, there was certain aspects of that character which actually were there was a part of you in there. Obviously, you turned and then became Absolutely, something else. Yeah. But that was like that was a dope role. So I recognized you instantly, and I was like, I saw you on the stairs or something, and I was like, Oh shit, hey man. Yeah, you're so nice. And then we just started drinking. Yeah. And then drinking to, Beluga I used, vodka. I used to drink a lot back then. <laughs> we both did. Yeah. And then, then that was the start of the friendship. But what was the point of that party besides the panty tree? I don't even know. But that's how we fucking met. Oh, partying. That's not how we met. We met in high partying. school. We met we, in high school. Yeah, we met in high school. We were playing ball against each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we didn't know each other then. You were, you were good. Count. You were good. I was fucking feisty. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, what? Panty tree? So panty tree was that the epoch of just fucking partying. And yeah. like really, that was like a big part of my past. Like where it was not, it was partying because I had to party because I was so discontent that yeah. I knew I had something to give. Oh, this was the point of it. The point of it was during that period, even though I was partying hard, I always had a certain awareness. Mm. So very, there was not, a, even though we partied all the time, whenever I was there, the party went well. Mm-hmm. Because I was always like keeping a look out for everything. I, could, right. I was always like still aware of enough situation that if someone was sketchy or if there was a sketchy situation, I was able to like shepherd the crew out. So I wrote a blog that says party with your third eye open. Like, yeah, party. But, but don't yeah. ever lose that shred of consciousness mm-hmm. where if some weird shit is happening that you're unaware of it. Right. right. And, and like you're talking about. Especially if it's, if, if it's in your space. If it's in your space or even out, even out like yeah. it, during this time in Austin, man, people were getting in street fights all the time. My homie, Roger Huerta, that was that yeah. famous video on TMZ where he, where that guy like crow hops and punches his girl in the back of the head. And then he takes his shirt off and fights this dude. Like this was happening on the regular, but that night I wasn't out because like in all the situation, even though that probably would have happened exactly as it did. But there was a, I think the key thing is like so many people we know, they'll start partying and I think it's one of the reasons why we're such close friends is because we've partied hard together. But there's never a point where I can't look at you and you can't look over at me and we're like, oh, yeah. We got this. We got this. Yeah. Like, we're, we're like always at the same level, yeah. no matter what the fuck we do. Yeah. And like Bodie Miller was the same way. Yeah. Kyle's the same way. Yeah. Like, there's always this level of we'll never take it to a point where we're like, we're not home anymore. Like, if we ever no. need to be home, oh. we're like, oh, I'm home. I answer, uh-huh. Yeah, answer the door first knock. Yeah, like we're it's 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 interesting because normally there's there's tribes of people that only have like one of us, right? We got like four or five of us, where you could trust any one of us to be the only person in the room to get out of the kidnapping or the the worst case yeah. scenario of whatever would happen. It, everything would be fine because one of us we sort it out. And normally you don't have a, groups of people with several of those people in it. Yeah, and 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 girls too. That's and that's the beautiful thing that we've been able to do is travel yeah. the world, explore, find all these different people. Yeah. Our homie Ed, Ed Scrine, is just yeah. did you see the Midway movie? It's such yet, a big, I've been in Australia, it's not yeah, out. it's such a big thing for him. Like he yeah. got his kind of breakout I'm so role. Happy for him. Yeah. And I got to spend some time with him. But we both recognized that night that we all partied with him on Halloween. We're like, Oh, brother. Yeah, there's no like one. you're one of us. Yeah, there's another one of us, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then you you see that thing. And that's what that's what made me and Bodhi friends is mm-hmm. everybody around us was devolving into chaos mm-hmm. at some Vegas nightclub, and we're walking <laughs> out of the mirage. Those days, and the only two people who were ab like even slightly aware of humanity and reality were me and Bodhi. And then we just looked at each other, and we're like, I'd never seen that before. Yeah, because even when I was partying hard, as like it was like you were the only guy. I was like, and I was like you too and we started pointing things out that yeah. only someone who was like aware and we were pouring like drinks down our face we were doing yeah, all doing the, the drugs whole, yeah, all the whole yeah, fucking yeah, thing. Whole thing but we we're like you saw that too and yeah. you saw that too and we just started like chuckling and then we became friends and i think it was a similar thing with us that night and a similar thing when we meet someone like ed it's like well oh, also shit. I, I think that if, if you have a very grounded center and a large center of your center right like if there's a big area for that space to run through and connect with gravity right it doesn't matter what you put in that system it's you're just gravitational you're just still connected like you're never going to do something to yourself that's what most people are going to do like you just have this sort of connection and you have that, I have that, I think Ed has that. Like, you know, I think I think it's a good thing that I'm not trying to 
toot our own horns, but I think people can work on that. It's, of wide, yeah, widening that, re- like that, that well, reception. Well, because I've also heard you, I've also heard you give that intention in ceremony mm-hmm. and in actually party situations yeah. where people are like kind of losing their shit a little bit, which happens at Burning Man all the time. All the time. But I've heard you give the advice, find your center of centers. Right. And so like, what, is that, what does that, that mean to you? Yeah, connect more with that. Yeah. Because that's like the grounding cord for you, mm-hmm. right? For me? For you, the center of centers. That's like a visualization you use. I mean, I've heard you give that advice a bunch. Yeah, so center of center for me is the actual force of gravity that is running through your body. Why are you planted with your feet on this ground? Because there's a force going through the universe, going through the planet on both sides of you, pushing and pulling and stabilizing you in one place. That is part of your energy. It's part of your force. It doesn't just go through you. You share it. You hold it. So if you can connect to that, you are never, ever fucked up. You're never lost. You're never confused about the future. You, you, you feel comfortable about, about being in the unknown. Mm-hmm. That, to me, the center of the center is that, is the website with all the cheat codes. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It, it's, 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 it's widening the reception uh, of, of the messages that the universe is giving to you. You know, as you say that, like, I know my center of center and I know it I know it sometimes in it's quiet a beam of light, right? Yeah. I know right. it. I know Super it. Thin. And I've felt it and I've been it and I've been actualized as it. And in in extreme situations like my car accident, the center of center was very present. Yep. You know, the the only time I got emotional was when I was saying sorry to Whitney because I knew she was going to have to take care of me, right? Like there was no other not another moment of that that actually that actually came because of extreme opposition and in all times of extreme opposition i'll find that Mm. but perhaps that same thing that i was talking about that nagging hot coal of anxiety Mm. it's because what's the force of resistance that's acting on it is small enough it's just enough to just blow a little bit of air on that coal and just keep it just a little bit red and a little bit of an ember and and i think but over time cumulatively that is like the raging fire that I need to that I need to overcome, and it's like starting to. It has like reached that point. It's reached the point where I'm. I no longer want to live with that thing anymore. But it was. It wasn't extreme enough to force me to take action to find my center of center, which I trust that I would. But it's just been just that nagging that nagging thing that I've had enough reason to be like, ah, oh, fuck that thing. I'll ignore it, rather than going straight towards it with the best of me yeah i mean yeah it's 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 not our natural inclination of how we're raised you know Mm -hmm. to to pursue that but it's important like that 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 stream of gravity that stream of light has so much information it's why you're stable so you can receive it like it's telling you everything you need to know that's why i always give that advice to people Mm -hmm. because <clears throat> when you when you when you get that relationship with center of center you 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 learn the lesson of why you are here right now and that trumps any other feeling that you feel that you may be feeling that's going to be ephemeral or, or very temporary doesn't mean much in 5 minutes doesn't mean much in 2 days and when you focus on that part of yourself and just the fact that the, the gift that you are here right now it, it starts to clear things up yeah what are the stories that you tell yourself that allow you to forget your center of center when you've when you've gotten into an emotional state or some place where you hmm. just conveniently forget your center of center because we have to tell ourselves a story to delude ourselves to lie to ourselves about that what are the stories <sighs> That anything matters. <laughs> really. That anything matters. Like, things are going to happen that break your heart. It's going to fucking break your heart. It's going to happen. Things are going to happen that make you feel so elated that it, 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 goes, it goes beyond bliss. And you're just like, wow, I've never felt like this. And, and it, it could be being in love or it could be getting a new job or whatever the case is. And then they calm back down. Things just happen. And you just have to live with that. Mm-hmm. Like, there's going to be a lot of pain in life. Yeah. 
there's also going to be a lot of happiness. And just being in the moment of that and appreciating all of it as one thing, I think is the key. It's almost like the it's getting rid of that judgment that says that one thing is so much better than the other, which is built into the actual emotional and sensational code of our body where some a scratch on the arm feels good whereas you know nails dragging across your skin like or like needles dragging across your skin doesn't feel good right so that's kind of built into our system but if we can access that code where we just accept all the things they're all emotional sensations yeah and just observe and accept our emotional sensations then we can stay with our center of center and then all of the shit that we do because both of us have gone on fucking emotional you know fucking downward spirals where we're just i'm a little bitch like (laughs) straight up like like i'm a little (laughs) bitch for like the first 48 hours 72 hours oh my god I'm a little bitch, I'm a little cabbage patch <laughs> bitch. But then, like, I catch up to myself, and then I'm not. Yeah. Like, yeah, but no, I, yeah, man, <laughs> fuck. I bet you are too. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. man. That's why I can't talk to you in the first time. I was like, are you good? You good? I remember when you were going through something that was really fucking challenging. Yeah. And I like reached out to just show some love because I knew it was up. And you kind of were like, <laughs> you just waited a couple of days and you were like, I couldn't talk to you because I knew you were laughing <laughs> actually the whole time. And I wasn't ready for you to be laughing the whole time at this situation. <laughs> but now I am. And then we had a like, big so like, laugh. Yeah. So now I'm going to call you because. <laughs> I'm ready to laugh too. I'm ready to laugh with you. Yeah. 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 It's sometimes just having a friend who is going to understand your perspective is enough. Yeah. You go, oh, there's somebody else who's going to go through what I'm going to go through. And I don't even have to talk to them until it's funny to both of us. Because <laughs> <laughs> the fact that knowing your consciousness, knowing that you're going to think it's funny, makes me laugh about it. Yeah. Which makes me feel better. It's yep. great. So thanks That's for it. doing nothing. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> It's the thing I do best. Yeah, it's great. There's nothing. There's nothing. Nothing I do better than doing nothing. Same here. All, all I hope is for. I appreciate everybody who's listened to this and enjoyed us having a great time. I mean, yeah, thanks for uh, listening to the jet lag drunk high me and me too. I'm not jet lag, but I'm both of those things as well. And I guess the thing I would want to impart is just may you all find friends and brothers like we have found in each other, and may you find that in as many people as you can, and sisters, brothers whoever that is, people who you never feel like you have to put on anything or be anything. You can just radically be yourself and you got someone there, brother or sister of the way, who's got you to the end. And that's what you you are to me. I love you too, man. Oh, man. In my heart. (laughs) Whitney in my heart. Love you guys. And everybody watch fucking Mortal Kombat when it comes out. That shit's insane. Yo, it's going to be fucking so good. Yeah. Small plug. The trailer should be out summer of 2020. Sick. So we come out January 15th, 2021. And it's, it's going to change shit. It's fucking great. It's fuck better that. than I, I we ever thought it could be. It's fuck incredible. That. And also, if you're into music, uh, Makad's yeah. musician name is King Gypsy with V's instead of Y's. Yeah, Check that know, shit I'm out not on sure Spotify. Why I mean, it's complicated, but yeah, King Gypsy with V's <laughs> where the Y's are supposed to be. Because I'm a weirdo. Cool. I think I might change my name again to Makad. Back to my name. I I'm I like that move. Yeah, I like that move. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do. I was standing on the beach in Australia, and like, and then the universe goes, "Change your name back." I was like, "The fuck did you told me to change my name in the first place? What's wrong with you? You fucking." <laughs> well, that was a chapter. Yeah. Now this next chapter. So. Yeah. Right. Well, then it may be Makad, but either way, you're Prangi fine. and I are doing something. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Right, yeah, but your job. music is incredible as Thank well, you. and definitely check that out if you're out there as well. Yeah, check that shit out. Love you guys. I love you guys too, Thank and you. I love you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe. Also, share with any friend that you think might benefit from it. And lastly, go to AubreyMarcus.com, sign up for my newsletter diary, and you won't miss a thing.